In our last video, you learned why properly naming and structuring your folder system is important for organizing and maintaining your data. In this video, we will go a step further and explain how to implement best practices for organizing folders. After watching this video, you will understand how to sort folders into a coherent structure. First, let's look again at the calendar example from our last video. You're making a calendar that features pictures of different dogs for each month of the year. To keep the project manageable, you'll want to create a well-defined folder structure to organize all the pictures you are collecting. One idea that probably immediately comes to mind is to have a separate folder for each month. You could simply title them January, February, and so on, but you may want to consider naming them numerically in case this becomes an annual project. In that case, you would name folders 2016-01 for January, 2016-02 for February, and so on. Two things to remember. Make sure to use a leading zero for the month, otherwise the folders will not sort chronologically. And make sure to use numbers, otherwise the folders will sort alphabetically. Of course, structuring your folders by month is not the only way to do it. Chronology may seem like the obvious categorization, but it really depends on what is most important about the project. You may choose to sort the images by dog breed with each breed in its own folder. You might prefer to sort by dog color or age. The type of file may be important to you and thus be the deciding factor in structuring your folders. You can also capture several important aspects of the project by creating multiple levels of nested folders, each with its own more granular category. For example, you might want to organize your calendar project primarily by month and further organize each month's folders into dog breed, color, image type, etc. These more specific folders will help you if you collect a large number of pictures for each month and have a hard time finding them by file name. However, try to limit the number of nested folders to something manageable as endless folders can become confusing and make it hard to find files. You are trying to save yourself frustration, not cause more. Now let's put all these ideas together into one possible way of organizing this calendar project. First, you may want to create a calendar folder in a location that makes sense to you, but don't bury it in subfolders. Inside the calendar folder, make a 2016 folder. Inside of that one, create a folder for each month using the year, 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 month, month format. Now, inside each month, you can create further nested folders to your preference. Maybe you want to differentiate by breed, or maybe by file format. Maybe you don't want to make any more folders at all. Whatever you decide to do, make sure you are consistent across the project. This means that if you have a nested folder for dog breeds inside the January 2016 folder, you do so for the rest of the month as well. When you are ready to create a 2017 calendar, you can copy your 2016 folder structure into the new project and get to work quickly. Remember, it's about helping your computer help you save both time and frustration.